Today's lesson, section 5.1, uh, we'll be talking about the unit circle, part one. I'll break this into two parts. Uh, so here, now we're going to talk about um, the unit circle kind of more in a radian sense, uh, rather than in chapter six when we talked about it more in degree sense. So um, we want to start by talking about the wrapping function now, or wrapping function. So this is a function whose domain is the set of all real numbers, okay? and whose range is the set of points on the unit circle. Okay, so you know what the unit circle is. It's this thing right here. Okay, so the unit circle, remember, has all the, so what they're saying is we're going around. So it's wrapping, because it's wrapping around itself, going around and around and around and around and around. Okay, the set of real numbers for the domain represents the radius that you get going in either direction. So remember our radius for the unit circle is one. And in either direction going along the outside of the unit circle. So we're going um, we're going around here, okay? Or we're going this way. Remember that going counterclockwise is a positive position or a positive radian measurement. And going clockwise is a negative radian measurement, just like what we do for our degrees, okay? Now remember the unit circle is just a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin in the xy plane and the equation that makes this true is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay. Now one thing to remember as we move along the unit circle in either direction we start at the point 1 0 and, we'll, and we will stop at a point p or point p x comma y. So, so let's say we go this way, and we stop at the point x comma y. Now that x comma y can be anywhere, so that's why we're using the variables x and y for this. It's not always going to be in the second quadrant. Um, the point p x y is what we call the terminal point. Okay, kind of like when we were doing degree and angles. You know how we talked about an initial side and then a terminal side, so that's the ending part of our array of our angle. Here, since we're talking about radians, we have an initial point, and then we have a terminal point, because we're just going along the outside of it, so we're not really making an angle, like we're not making rays, we're talking about distance around the circle, okay? That's why it's not, it's, that's why it's in degree or radians rather than degrees. Okay, so let's look at our first example. So here I want to be able to show that the point square root of three over three, comma square root of six over three is on the unit circle. So remember the word show means that it should be on there. To show this, we want to use the equation for the unit circle because if we can plug those values in and it equals 1 then that's showing that it's on that line. If it wasn't equal to 1 then it wouldn't be on the line or on the circle. So here our x value is the square root of 3 over 3. We square that and then our y value is square root of 6 over 3 and we square that. So now remember square the top and the bottom. So square root of 3 squared is 3. 3 is squared is 9 square root of 6 squared is 6, and 3 squared is 9. So 3 plus 6, because we have common denominators here, are going to be 9 over 9, and that is 1. So, indeed, we showed that that point is on the unit circle. Okay. Next example, we have a point P square that has the, the order pair of square root of 3 over 2, comma y and is on the unit circle in the fourth quadrant. Find its y-coordinate. Okay? So it's telling you that it is, so we can use our equation for the unit circle to help us find the other one, but also notice that it gave us a quadrant. Okay, So think about your y-coordinate in the fourth quadrant. Your x will be positive, and your y will be negative. So we want a negative answer when we're done. So I'll plug in my x-coordinate. And now I want to solve for y. 
So a square, square to three, which is three, square four or two is four. Okay, now I want to get y by itself, so let's subtract three fourths to both sides. So that gives me y squared equals, and remember one is the same thing as four over four, making common denominators, so it gives me one over four. I square root both sides. So the square root of y squared is y. Now I can split this up and say a square root of one over a square root of four. So square root of one is one, square root of four is two, and remember, there's supposed to be a plus or minus here. Because we're looking at like when I put in the square root of sine, or I take the square root of both sides, then I need to have plus or minus. But we don't want both answers. We want the negative answer because that's the quadrant we're in. If we were talking about the positive one, we'd be in the first quadrant. So that means that our y must be just the negative value of the one half. So y equals negative one half for the fourth quadrant. Okay, example three. Find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by each real number t. Okay, so you're given an angle measurement for your radians. And so that's telling you the distance you go around the unit circle. So you want to find the terminal point. Now these values are going to be on the unit circle. So they should land at some point that you already know, not some random point. So here I have my unit circle. Remember I start at 1 comma 0. So then this is 0. This is pi. Or this is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is the same thing as 2 pi. Well, if it's 3 pi, then I go around once. Okay? I get to there. Then I go around again, but since I've only gone around 2 pi, I need, just need to go another pi. So that lands me at the point for pi. And the point for pi is the opposite of 0. Because remember, you're going in the opposite direction on the x-axis. So it should be negative 1 comma 0. OK? Here, same thing. Okay, so we have 0, you have pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and that's the same thing as 2 pi. Okay, so now 5 pi over 6, now if you think about these fractions, make common ones, pi over 2 is the same thing as 3 pi over 6. Okay, pi is the same thing as 6 pi over 6, and then 3 pi over 2 is 9 pi over 6. Okay? So think about those. Where does 5 pi over 6 land? Well, 5 pi over 6 is bigger than 3 pi over 6, but smaller than 6 pi over 6. So it must land in the fourth or second quadrant. Okay? So now our point, remember that's the same thing as the 30 or the pi over 6 of um, the first quadrant. So then that must be negative square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So let's write that a little bit bigger. So that would be our terminal point. Now, remember, I'm looking at the unit circle when I do this, or using my unit circle to help me out. Okay. I don't just pull the values right out of the um, out of the air. So then C, you have t equals negative pi over two. Now for that one, zero pi over two. Pi. Okay. So here, remember your negative value. So you got to go in the negative direction. So that means I would need to go this way. Now since it's negative pi over 2, notice that pi over 2 is up here on the 90. So negative pi over 2 would be the same thing as 3 pi over 2. 
at that point is zero because your x value is aligned with the y-axis and then as far out as it can go on the um, radius so it should be zero negative one okay have fun